All right, and um, looking at this question, based on your knowledge of the structure of wood, explain why it is much easier to split along the axis of the tree, but it resists splitting in the perpendicular direction, that is, across, uh, across the tree. Right? So what we're looking at here, the main thing is wood has a grain. All right, that grain runs vertically up the tree like long fibers, all right? And just like string cheese, you know, you can peel it along that direction um, and it'll split apart uh, readily, but it uh, has stronger bonds holding those fibers um, you know, uh, intact. In other words, keeping the, the string all in one uh, piece. Um, and so anyway, the, the key is it has those grains like little sticks or, or uh, tubes and they are uh, stronger in the direction of the grain than, um, than the, the bond holding those grains together. All right. And so that's why it's easier to uh, split in the direction of the grain. 19. If 6.5 kilograms of ice at zero degrees is put in a cooler, how much energy will it absorb from the contents, that is the food, before it is completely liquid at zero degrees? All right. So you're going camping, you get a cooler, you put some ice in it, and we're going to say um, that ice is at its freezing point, all right, 6.5 kilograms of it, and the heat of fusion. Now, even if you don't remember these terms, the key thing here is this is joules per gram, okay? So that means it requires 334 joules, that's energy, all right, 334 joules to melt a gram of ice, okay, at its freezing point or at its melting point, however you want to look at that. All right. So we want to know how much energy is uh, going to be required to melt not one gram, that would be 334 joules, but 6.5 kilograms of ice. All right. So in order for ice to melt, you have to give it energy. All right. Um, so here is your ice cube. All right, <laughs> if you will, um, as you put energy into that ice cube, it then uh, begins to melt. All right, um, and that energy going into the ice cube, of course, is um, being absorbed from the contents from the food. All right, that's the principle of uh, of the cooler. So. This is really quite straightforward. 334 joules per gram of ice. All right. But we have 6.5 kilograms, all right? So first we can just say, well, there are 1000 grams to 1 kilogram. Now our grams cancel. And now we find the joules per kilogram of ice, um, and we have 6.5 kilograms, all right? We can put a one there if you want. And that's it. We calculate that out, and we have um, 334 times 1,000 uh, times 6.5, okay. and we get um, 2,171,000, okay, joules. Okay. So we can write that like this. Um, or, and I didn't specify anything here, so we could leave it like that, but it makes more sense to write this as 2,171 
kilojoules. Right? Quite a bit of energy, actually. How much energy will the melted ice in the cooler, okay, so this, uh, this melted ice that has become water, okay, how much energy will the, the melted ice, and I actually had the wrong um, number there, <clears throat> how much will it absorb as it warms from zero to 20 degrees? Okay, so after your ice melts and it's all water, then it starts to increase in temperature, right? You have um, probably felt water that has recently been melted. It's still very, very, very cold, isn't it? That's because it's right at that um, melting point um, until it's completely melted and then it'll begin to warm, right? So, um, so this is just the second step. We have that same amount of water, 6.5 kilograms, this time it's of water, and we're given the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.184, and here's the important part, joules per gram degree Celsius. That means, and see, again, we don't really care what it's called, all right? This is what's important. 4.184 joules, that's the amount of energy per gram. So for every gram um, to, to, to warm up one gram of water per degree Celsius, okay, so to warm one gram, one degree, it requires 4.184 joules, all right? But we have how many grams? Well, we have 6.5 kilograms. And we're warming it not one degree, but 20 degrees, okay? Now, sometimes you'll see these units expressed as joules per gram Kelvin. Um, it's the same thing. You don't need to convert degrees C to Kelvin or Kelvin degrees C, whatever, um, because we're talking about the difference in temperature, okay? Our difference is 20 degrees, um, and degrees C has the same uh, change as in Kelvin. You know, you add 273, you add 273, then you take the difference, it comes right back out, okay? So whether you're in Kelvin or degrees C, uh, if it's a change in temperature, it doesn't matter. All right, so to find the energy then, we just uh, start with that. 4.184 joules per gram per degree C. Okay? And then we have, um, I can uh, throw in my conversion here to go from grams to kilograms, and I do that because I have my uh, value as 6.5 kilograms of the originally ice, which has melted, because it's the melted ice now, all right? So that cancels my kilograms, all right? So now I need to factor in the temperature. So that's where the 20 degrees comes in because that's the amount of heat and after I multiply it that it'll take to raise the 6.5 kilograms by one degree so I have to put this extra one to say I'm raising it 20 degrees right and there you go so again the the key with most all of these thermodynamics uh, questions is look at those units Joules, that's energy per gram per degree C. So you just plug it in, cancel the units, and uh, let's see what, what we get with this one. All right. So 4.184 uh, times 1,000 times 6.5 times 20. So we have 543, 900, 
uh, 20. 543,920 um, joules. Okay, that's what's left. My degree C cancels. I'm left with joules. Right? So once again, not necessary really, but we could say that's 543.9 um, point and uh, uh, technically I suppose I don't really have many significant figures but I'll just leave it at this we're not really too concerned about that at this point okay